Tom Chatfield had some really interesting points about gaming. Um, I really liked his equation that wanting plus liking equals engagement. And to me that really speaks to the power that gaming can have in the classroom or any elements of gamification really because students are more engaged and they're more apt to want to complete the work when there's some sort of um, reward involved. And for a really long time, I struggled with the idea of intrinsic versus extrinsic rewards and, you know, are we teaching kids that they need to get, you know, a piece of candy or a toy or a pencil or something every time they do something that we're asking them to do. But in gamification, the reward is intrinsic because it's a reflection of their personal achievements in the game. So I feel like you know, earning badges, or in, in my classroom I use class craft, so earning XP for them is a big deal because then they can modify the way their avatar looks by spending their XP and their gold coins in, um, in the little store area where they can buy different equipment for their avatar. And that, because it's not an actual tangible good, I think that that's more of a reflection of their intrinsic motivation to continue going and to keep leveling up and earning more experience points. Um, so I thought that was a really good equation. And it also reminded me of my own gaming experience. Um, just on my iPhone, every time I start a different mobile game, I feel like I get so far up to a point until um, you know I'm just desperate to have the next item that I play more and I play more and I play more. Um, so a good example of that would be um, a monster music game that I was playing where you could make the monsters sing a certain song or have a certain um, timbre to their vocalizing if you um, were able to achieve a certain amount of coins and then you could buy new monsters to refine the music that you were playing and that was like super addictive to me. Um, I played it all the time, probably more than I should have. Um, but just the idea too that um, Tom Chatfield said was that games provide ambition plus delight. So it's kind of interesting that like in the classroom setting, we're talking about making each new piece of knowledge feel delightful to students because there is that motivation and desire to achieve and the desire to acquire the knowledge and then that knowledge is represented in the form of badges or XP or a progressing character in a game. So I'm liking how all of this is working together. Um, it validates what I've been doing with Classcraft and gamifying my classroom and it makes me want to take things to the next level. Um, so he, he talked a lot about how um, the reward schedule is calibrated in games so that it keeps people engaged because it's sort of like a just right task at a just right time. And then sometimes a task that might be a little out of reach, but you can still achieve it um, with enough effort and enough gameplay. And that feels to me like education theory. Um, for example, Vygotsky's Zone of Proximal Development is really inherent in this idea that you can do something with just enough support or just enough scaffolding or in the case of a game just enough um, gameplay just enough time just enough you know support from some of the um, little ancillary pieces that you can pick up to help you do your job better or pieces of equipment or like in Minecraft I can beat that monster and go get that mob if um, you know, I have like one extra piece of armor or if I can upgrade my leather, leather armor into gold armor and then I have a little more resilience. So um, I'm very intrigued by that idea too and um, I'm really glad I'm in this class so we can actually, you know, articulate these intellectual wanderings and um, be able to talk to other people who are heading on the same path. So yay for EdTech 532. <laughs> um, Something else that really struck me was the idea that games make probability compelling. Um, I'm not a math person. I, you know, struggled at math my whole life, but I find that I'm really, really good at being able to increase my chances of finding gold and diamonds in Minecraft um, by taking a very systematic approach um, and, and thinking about how I'm mining from a problem solving point of view. So I feel like to a certain extent, gaming makes math fun. And that makes sense to me because, um, you know, it's really a numbers game. Like how many more 
XP do I need to be able to level up? And then once I level up, what other additional abilities will I be able to unlock or what will I be able to do next? Um, so within the context of a game, it feels like my potential is, is unlimited. And I think that that's what I want my students to feel as well. So um, the last thing that was really cool to me in this TED Talk was about how we can reverse engineer our evolution to take advantage of what makes us tick in terms of awards or rewards for doing a job well done. And I thought that that was super valuable because he started to kind of outline all of the, the ways in which games um, appeal to sort of our baser instincts. Um, they have an experience bar. We can monitor that and continue going and building the experience and that's like a visual representation of our progress. He talked about um, having multiple long and short aims because people get bored and that's what I strive for in my classroom is, is changing the activity you know every 20 minutes so that we're doing something different um, sometimes in shorter interims than that um, but the, varying the activity types as well so that you might collaborate on one quest, but on the next quest, you'll be reading something. And on the quest after that, you'll be making something. And the quest after that, you'll be going out and watching something. Um, and on the quest after that, you know, who knows? <laughs> so I think that that's a good reminder that it isn't like we're talking about taking curriculum and gamifying it by putting it into little bite-sized chunks that are all identical. There has to be some room for true choice and variety so students feel an ownership over their learning, um, maybe more so than if every single kid in the class is doing the exact same thing at the exact same time every single day. So I can see how, um, you know, even in classes where that rely on really traditional pedagogical approaches, you could take a day out and do gamification days on Fridays or come up with a schedule that works for you and individually and your students. Um, I guess all of my little neurons are just firing and I'm thinking about how to make this workable for my class. But I think what this TED Talk really did for me was helped me cement the idea that I want to go moving forward into more quest-based learning as opposed to um, sort of putting the layer of gamification over everything that we do anyway. So I think it's taking Classcraft to maybe the next step um, and going with something like 3D Game Lab where I can have you know, quest chains or sequences that get unlocked and it's a little more sophisticated and, and game-like. But I'm very excited and I enjoyed this TED Talk and this is my video reflection and it's really long right now so it'll probably take forever to upload to YouTube. But thanks for watching.